Hi, I'm Natasha Lou Bordizzo and I'm in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. You play Helena in The Society on Netflix. Now, I binged season one in like three days. Okay. I just couldn't stop watching it. But for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, give us just a brief description of what the show's about. It has allusions to the Pied Piper of Hamlin and essentially you know, it, it, the story of him playing the flute and stealing the children away. Um, I think that there are several elements of the story that are quite dark. Um, but essentially, on the surface, all you need to know is that we're a group of teenagers who get on a bus somewhere, there is a big biblical storm, and then we wake up back in a replica of our hometown, our parents are gone, and we suddenly have to learn how to govern ourselves. And that results in a lot of chaos. Yeah. Definitely. When yeah. you first auditioned for the project, did you audition for Helena or a different role? We kind of got, like, a variety of bios to read, but essentially um, I think I was most interested in Helena mostly because we are the opposite humans in real life. Being religious is a huge element of her character and being in like a long-term committed relationship that she wants to get married very soon in <laughs> are all things that I'm not familiar with. I gr did grow up Catholic, but I've recently, you know, um, in my adulthood become more of a agnostic I'd say citizen. So I, I think it was just scary for me, and I wanted to challenge myself to humanize um, a very like archetype kind of character that I had nothing in common with, and make her relatable and likable. Yeah. Yeah. Helena is definitely the most religious character in yeah. the show, and she even becomes a preacher really, and yeah. sort of steps into this role as a leader. Mm -hmm. How would you say she evolves over the course of season one? Um, I think that she. A, a big arc of the show is that each character is certain about certain things that in their life they held dear to them. And as time goes on, it becomes very much almost like the Stanford Prison Experiment or something where everyone's, you know, I'm making this show sound <laughs> really uh, intense. It's intense. But I, it is intense. It's intense. Um, and it's kind of like her certainty is her love for Luke, her boyfriend, and her faith. And she uses them as like a vehicle to get through this challenge but everyone's certainty is shattered at some point in the show and hers is too I won't ruin too much but um certain truths that she held dear are slowly broken and it just adds to the drama of the show really and how would you say that Helena's relationship with her faith evolves as the story goes on I think it becomes less about God and more about keeping the group calm and hopeful for a future because there is no hope. And I think that's what causes people to party, to like take drugs, have sex, go wild. And she's like, we should just, we should just stay calm and take care of each other, do the work that Ali is saying we should do. And she uses the church as like a vehicle to inspire that message. Instead of talking about God, she's more talking about things in like a place of faith and just you know, camaraderie and bringing everyone together. So I like that about her actually, because when I first read the role, I was like, oh God, there's gonna be so many like Bible excerpts that I have to research and go into. But it was actually more about just community and reason and she's very logical. So I think she's got potential to be a leader if we get season two. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I think she'd make a great mayor. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a moment, hopefully going to be a moment where that becomes a possibility because Luke is clearly just, without ruining anything, not getting things done. So, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be one of the main things I'm excited about for season two is seeing what happens to their relationship because it's left on a quite a problem. <laughs> yeah, do you think yeah. they'll make it down the aisle? Oh, God. Um, maybe eventually, but there's going to be a big period of uh, issues following the end of season one. Well, yeah. yeah, because how do you think Helena's gonna react when she finds out that mm -hmm. Luke is lying mm -hmm. about Allie and Will fixing the election? Oh, it's gonna be ugly. Yeah. Um, because she has so be much ugly. Yeah, faith I and trust in him. She is gonna, she's on the verge. I think she's kind of like staying calm, like the whole of season one, like I'm the only one that's got logic and reason and staying calm and everyone just has come to church and I'll just, you know, calm you down again. And uh, that's going to reach a breaking point, I think. She was kind of getting there towards the end of season one, but this will be, I want her to snap for season two because I think that'll be fun. I yeah. know, I'm excited to see what it would even look like for her to snap yeah. because we've seen her so calm. I and deliberately played it extremely because I feel like a lot of the characters are so unstable through the show that I would, wanted to, Helena to be really, um, I deliberately made her very stable and like collected and composed. So 
you know, if we get season two, that will be my playtime to just, yeah, explode. Now, Helena and Luke, obviously a lot of fans ship them and love yes. them together. Yes, oh, the word ship gives me so much anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to ask. Stand and ship. <laughs> we stand, we ship. I've gone to bed, like, with nightmares of those words just floating <laughs> above my mind. Anyway. But I want to know, which yeah. couple do you ship the most? <laughs> and as I say this, my entire Instagram like tagged feed is like flipping through my mind of all the <laughs> fan art and people like Photoshop faces onto. Um, I think honestly speaking, like it's so predictable, but Grizz and Sam. Yes. Because even when I watched the show, I hadn't seen any of their scenes because I'm not in or around any of them. So it was a whole new storyline for me to watch. And especially the scene where um, Grizz has just discovered that Sam is the father, which obviously is not true. Um, and they have that big argument. It's just, yeah, it's pretty endearing. I agree. They're my number one ship, too. Yeah. I want to see more of them in they season two. They were kind of like the underdog. I think when we were reading the scripts and going through table reads and filming it, they were just like another couple. Like, there was a bunch of couples and they were just another one. And then as the show progressed and it was released and filmed, I think some you can't predict what magic happens between two actors on, on set, so... Yeah. With all of the characters, what are some of the things you hope to see happen if there is a season two? Oh, there's a lot. I think I want everyone to reach their full potential of what they would do in this time of crisis. Because um, I think the crisis is going to get worse. We have no resources, no food. Well, we discovered some, but it's still pretty dire. Um, so I think I want everyone to just reach the full highest potential of their character, whether it's in a good way or a bad way. Like, everyone's just complete, stripped-down selves because I think we're still able to hold it together and put on the clothes and put on the makeup and just kind of go through life in a still pretty controlled way. But I think war could break out in the future because it's already getting that way with the coup and the takeover. So I'm excited for it to get actually even more uh, wild. With the show, there are so many online fan mm -hmm. theories about what could be going on. Mm -hmm. So... I want to read through some of them and okay. get your take on these theories. If yep. you think they're far-fetched, yep. if you think it could be possible. you know, I just, know nothing, by the way, so anyway. Just your personal thoughts on it. <laughs> okay. All right, so theory one, Dewey didn't kill Cassandra, somebody else did. I mean, Gordy went at it pretty scientifically, so I think, I kind of think he did it. Yeah, I don't think that's the one that's going to be uh, a reveal or anything. Yeah. And, and he confesses. Yeah, but, yeah, he's pretty misogynistic, so, you know. Either way, the execution was probably... <laughs> For the best, oh man. <laughs> okay. For the okay. best. <laughs> All right, theory two. Cam yeah. Okay, so this is just Campbell. Yeah. Campbell is the father of Becca's baby, and that's why Kelly oh. tells Sam, his brother, she has your eyes. Jeez. Um, mm, I hope not. Uh, that would be... I don't know what that would do to a lot of characters if that was true. That would really, I mean, that would change our entire vision of Becca as well and Campbell and what's going, yeah. That could be interesting, but I don't think it's true. Next theory, they're in a parallel universe. That's a good one. Yep, I think that's just a solid could be that we're holding on to for the next season. Yeah. And so going off that, you know, the dog, we see the dog, the dog. Oh, in the beginning, yep. in the end. So the theory is the dog can go back and forth between the universes. <sighs> Yeah, I, we've thought a lot about the dog, because by the way, as the cast, we are also constantly thinking about theories. Um, we think a lot about the dog, but like, we we don't know if it's more that the dog's presence in our universe matters as opposed to them going between universes. Like there's a gateway or a portal that's only available to this spiritual, I mean, we think it could also be the original man that had turned into a dog, the bus, the bus driver. That, that is in the dog form now. I don't know. And last theory, mm -hmm. the kids are being replaced in West Ham, and that explains, you know, maybe the new younger kids that we see at the end of season one. Oh, replaced. I think that they're just a younger grade, or and our wall, names are on the wall, so I don't think we're replaced. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, that's all the theories and questions thank I have. You. So thank you so much for talking thank to me, and so I hope much. we get a season two because I need to know what's going to happen. <sighs> Please, Netflix gods, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>